saltwater fly fishing is a lot like hunting, which is probably why I find it so appealing to me. You get long periods where just nothing happens. You know, when your mind kind of starts to wander and you enjoy your natural surroundings and ultimately slip into kind of a trance where you contemplate life itself. Then, out of nowhere, it all of a sudden, the action happens and we rely on our instinct, skill, and experience to seize the moment, just like we do when we're hunting. Also like hunters, saltwater fly anglers are careful to consider their equipment. In freshwater fly fishing, a reel is simply a fancy line holder. That's all it is. But in saltwater fly fishing, a reel must be utterly reliable, have a fail-proof drag system on it, have ample backing, corrosion resistance, and has to hold together when powerful oceanic fish decide to be uncooperative with you. As crazy as it sounds, fly reels that met the needs of serious saltwater fly anglers didn't really exist until a Hungarian immigrant who was also a master machinist, toolmaker, and artist made a reel in 1974. In this video, we'll explore the history and modern relevance of the Tibor reel. The history of the Tibor reel is just as much about the man behind the reel than it is the reel itself. As a teenager, Ted Jaraksic fought against the Soviets in the Hungarian Revolution. He was an apprentice tool and die maker at the age of 14 and earned his master's certificate by the age of 17. When the Soviets got the upper hand, Ted fled Hungary and ended up in the United States in 1957. After living in a Catholic orphanage for a year, Ted joined a professional soccer team and learned to speak English. Once he mastered the English language, he returned to his passion of being a tool and die maker, which he essentially still does today. But here's where our story gets great. Ted was always a fisherman, and he eventually put down roots in Florida, where he enjoyed fishing. In 1972, when Ted was visiting the Worldwide Sportsman Store in the Keys, he came across the legendary fly angler, Billy Pate. After that meeting, Ted's fate was to build reels that would become legendary. Billy Pate was already an absolute legend in uh, saltwater fly angling circles by the 1970s and was also the co-owner of Worldwide Sportsman. When Ted was introduced to Billy by a friend, Billy was in bad spirits because he just lost a huge tarpon when his Finnor fly reel failed on him. Ted took the reel, dissected it, and instantly recognized many design flaws with the reel. Ted stated that he was gonna build Billy a better reel. And Ted honored his promise and returned a year later with two reels that he made by hand. Billy Pate was just instantly impressed with these reels, but in return for the two handmade reels, Ted wanted nothing more than fly fishing lessons from Billy Pate himself. In 1976, Billy ended up ordering hundreds of these reels and sold them as Billy Pate reels at a store in Florida. The Billy Pate reel was a, a huge and instant success, and Billy Pate would go on to break dozens and dozens of fly rod records, including a 188-pound tarpon on 16-pound tippet. Billy would also be the first angler to catch all the world's billfish species on the fly and was the first fly angler to ever subdue a blue marlin on the fly. After 50 years, the Billy Pate reel is still manufactured today. This reel has over 350 world records to its name and has had the biggest impact on saltwater fly fishing than any other reel ever made. The Billy Pate has an excellent drag, it's built like a tank, and many people love the anti-reverse on these reels 
so you don't get a knuckle buster on a running tarpon. The anti-reverse allows the drag knob, which is right here, to be on the winding side. So you don't have to switch hands on the rod to make a drag adjustment. The sound was also made so a guide could tell if the fish was running or the angler was winding in line. Real manufacturers have been trying to duplicate the sound for 50 years. But where does a reel like this fit in today's world? You know, admittedly, the old Billy Pate reel is an antiquated design compared to modern reels. The arbor on it is just so tiny that line pickup is pretty slow in comparison to, to, to uh, today's reels. It's also the heaviest reel in each line class, so it's probably not the best for blind casting all day. And converting these reels from left to right hand wine is a huge pain in the ass. But that aside, these reels are built like absolute tanks and they're fun as hell to fish. And this reel is about 40 years old. That's right, it's 40 years old. And it was still working great, but uh, I sent it back to Tibor just to get a little checkup and service on it because it's been serving well for about three generations now. And, uh, you know, even though this reel is 40 years old, they're still supporting and servicing it. I mean, what other reel company can you say does that? In 1995, Ted Jaraksic released a completely new line of reels under the Tibor name. Ted's goal with this reel was reliability and performance during long sustained battles with big fish. In addition to being one of the toughest reels ever made, or quite possibly the toughest reel ever made, they're also complete works of art. You know, you won't find a more attractive and nostalgic reel than the original Tibors. Rather than give these reels line class designations, Ted named them after the places where he envisioned them being used. The Everglades is currently the smallest reel and considered a, a seven to nine weight reel. The Riptide is a nine to 11 weight reel. The Gulf Stream is an 11 to 13 weight reel and the Pacific is a monster 13 to 15 weight reel. The old masters in Europe told Ted, the most be beautiful machines have the least moving parts. And Ted put that philosophy to work when he designed the Tibor series of reels. Even today, most experienced saltwater anglers consider the Tibor and you know the old Able Super Series reels to be the most reliable saltwater reels ever made. Bucking the trend of modern seal drag reels, the Tibor retains that huge exposed drawbar cork drag. You know, rather than being a weakness, that drawbar cork drag is actually its strength. You know, just quickly take the spool off after your fishing trip, rinse everything in fresh water, and this reel will never fail you. With many sealed systems, when water gets in and you can't maintain them, your reel fails, and that won't happen with a properly maintained T-bore. T-bores are also famous for their corrosion resistance. This T-bore Pacific was at the bottom of the ocean for over three years. When it was returned to the owner, he cleaned it up and used it for many more years. So don't be afraid of a reel that has a drawbar drag system on it. The Tibor is built like a tank and is one of the most reliable fly reels ever made. But there have been a few small design changes over the year, mainly the uh, cutouts for the spool to decrease weight and let the line breathe under the arbor better. And uh, there's been a handle change and the latest generation, I believe, has ceramic bearings now too. So there have been some slight changes over the years. Tibor went through some models and versions that are no longer around. 
the Tibor QC or quick change reels didn't sell well, mainly because most saltwater anglers don't change spools, they change reels. Add to this the fact that the QC models were heavier and a lot more expensive, and fly anglers really didn't think the extra cost was worth it. There was also a Tibor Freestone model that was a perfect 6-7 to seven weight reel in the lineup. That size really didn't sell well in saltwater circles and was discontinued, but today the Freestone brings a premium price on the used market. I really wish I snatched one of those up when I had the chance. There was also a Tibor Spay reel that had a limited run, and those are also in high demand in the collector's market. The Everglades has probably been my favorite reel in the lineup and my favorite bonefish and redfish reel ever made. These are Becca and my current Everglades reels, and I don't think we'll ever part with this pair. And this is my newest addition to the family right here, the Gulfstream. A friend sent me to the, a link to this reel on clearance at Reds, and I went on there and I bought it instantly. My viewers know that I love me some Pez Gallo. Even with modern, sealed drag, huge arbor reels on the market today, guys pulling on big fish in remote places will still take a T-bar over those. Well into his 70s, Ted was not done designing reels yet. <laughs> he wanted to design his own sealed drag reel that was centered around ruggedness and simplicity, but was also easily serviced by the user. Ted saw all the issues with sealed drags of the day, and that's with hard use salt water or moisture eventually got into the drag due to real flex, uh, bad seals, or just uh, metallurgy itself. At that point, seal drag reels became kind of disposable reels. Ted decided to solve this issue by creating a seal drag that could easily be checked and serviced by the user in minutes. Ted also wanted a reel with no overrun as you strip line off the drag. In 2011, the Signature Series was revealed, and people marveled over its beauty, elegance, <laughs> and high price tag. Production runs, the some of the early first production runs did have some issues, but those were worked out, and uh, the Signature Series reels became some of the finest saltwater reels ever made. And in retrospect, these reels were just way ahead of their time. The Signature Series Reel is probably the most misunderstood and underappreciated saltwater reel in existence. After the problems with the initial run of reels were cleared up, these reels have been nothing but dead reliable to everybody who's used them. These even might be beefier than the, orig you know, the original Tibor series that everybody loves. If you pay attention to the internet, people on forums will, will tell you We'll try to convince you not to buy these reels, but uh, they can't really give you a reason why. You know, they've never broken one and probably have never ever seen one broken, yet they continue to repeat that saying over and over until it becomes pseudo-factual. You know, when you press them for reasons why they hate the Signature Series reels, you know, they'll, they'll search the depths of the internet and find some guy who complains that he only gets eight pounds of drag out of his reel, or this reel is just way too heavy, you know, and people use that as their reason for not recommending this reel, even though that's stupid. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what the max drag is on this, and I don't really care. I fish with about two or three pounds of drag pressure on the reel, and I might bump it up to five or six pounds maximum during a fight. You know, as long as the drag's smooth, adjusts within reason, and has low startup inertia, I'm perfectly happy with a reel that only has nine pounds of drag for a tarpon or permit. You know, uh, I definitely won't be using more than that. And the second criticism of the Signature Series reels is weight. 
So let's compare the signature 910 to the CCF X2 810 by Nautilus. And both of these reels have 65 pound gel spun backing and a nine weight floating line on them. The CCF X2 has just been the darling of inshore saltwater fishing for several years now. And the same people claiming that the signature reel is way too heavy recommend this reel instead. So let's weigh it. It's uh, 11.4 ounces. And the signature reel is 12.2 ounces. So the actual weight difference between the two is less than an ounce. So are you really going to notice that less than an ounce while you're fishing? So honestly, I honestly can't tell the difference in weight when I hold them. But uh, it seems like a pretty stupid excuse to hate this reel. I like the CCF X2, and I actually have several of these reels, and I like them. You know, uh, even the Silver King, I really love that reel, for the weight to size and power ratio on it. But what I hate about these reels is the infinite drag adjustment on it. I mean, I just, man, it's crazy. You know, turning the drag knob six full turns while you're fighting a fish gets really old fast. And, uh, you know, I, I also don't like how Nautilus grossly overestimates their line capacity. Other than that, Nautilus makes a great reel at a fair price. But the signature reels are expensive, but no more expensive than a new Hatch Iconic. And the signature series is a better reel in my opinion. Tibor reels are the type of reel, like some of the Abel reels, that you'll be passing down to future generations. The best fly anglers to ever walk the planet trust Tibor reels, and so do most saltwater guides. When you fish long enough, you watch most things come and go in the fishing industry. But there's some things that never grow old, like Tibor reels and the man behind them, Ted Jurassic. I have a friend who absolutely refuses to buy a T-bar reel. In 2015, he told me that draw bar reels are a thing of the past. <laughs> and uh, it was that same year that he went out and he bought his first, his first uh, Hatch Fanatic reel. Since that time, he sent several of those reels back for repair. And Hatch is now on their third version of that reel in six years, basically. And you look at Sage, Orvis, and Ross, and they can't keep a saltwater reel in their lineup for more than four or five years. Tibor owners will never experience such things. In retrospect, his comment was pretty silly because all of his problems with hatch reels stem from the sealed drag in those reels not really being sealed. Now, the just released Hatch Iconic reel has a drag that can be serviced by the user without voiding the warranty. Isn't that funny? Ted Jurassic knew that sealed drags wouldn't be sealed decades before this. Ted sold sealed drag reels that can easily be serviced by the user without voiding the warranty back in 2011. And he called it the Signature Series. <laughs> My, how things go full circle, don't they? I told you this reel was ahead of its time. But watching cable television shows back in the 1990s, I was enamored by the show Walker's K Chronicles and The Spanish Fly. Watching Flip Pallet and Jose Wahebe subdue fish in exotic places with Tibor reels made me want to experience that myself. And... Luckily, through hard work and good decisions in my life, I was ultimately able to make that dream come true. Disregard all those hokey reviews from a lot of the retail shops on YouTube who skew results 
to meet vendor preferences. Ask the guys who spend two weeks in the Seychelles every year what they trust, and they'll likely recommend a tough drawbar reel from uh, Tibor, Abel, or Shilton. Those guys firmly believe that nothing is bulletproof, and given enough exposure to saltwater and huge GTs, every reel will eventually fail. I don't know if you've gone online, even Mako reels fail in those uh, environments sometimes. And they want a reel that they can put back into action if a problem happens. Sure, they have spare reels with them, a spare reel or two, but um, um, you know, uh, you need a backup to your backup and being able to get one of your reels back up and running is a, is a huge benefit to them. But more importantly, they want a reel that they can visually inspect before trip to ensure that everything is 100% before departing. As hunters, we wouldn't fly to Africa without inspecting every inch of our rifles. You know, we wouldn't drive thousands of miles to hunt pheasant in South Dakota without inspecting our shotguns first. And most anglers traveling to remote places want to inspect their reels before they travel. And the Tibor allows you to do that. Sage, Hatch, and Orvis get a lot of airtime in the industry because they're constantly coming out with new rods and reels to replace older models that were deemed inferior. Because of these constant product releases, everyone is continuously promoting their products for sales. Tibor doesn't play that game. Tibor makes a well-engineered, quality product and supports it for many decades. So Tibor is pretty boring to the retail industry, but the fact is that they're actually boringly reliable. And I just love all fishing, whether I'm casting flies to trout, out in the open ocean trolling for marlin, jigging deep for yellowtail, or soaking bait for catfish, I just love fishing with a passion. Everything from bluegill to blue marlin. I love it. If I go back as far as I can remember, I was fishing with my dad and granddads. You know, when I think about my children, my mind automatically gravitates to us fishing together. When I think about some of the best times I've ever had with my wife, at least half those times involved a rod and reel. Because of this, I'm naturally drawn to companies who make high quality products that'll last a lifetime. When you pick up a reel that's, you know, been in use for 20, 30, 40 years, you relive some of those great memories. And Tibor reels are the type of product that makes that possible. Holding this Billy Pate reel is like holding grandpa's old Winchester Model 70. I just can't put it down. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video about one of my favorite companies in the fishing industry. Don't forget to support my channel by hitting that subscribe button. And you can contact me with any questions or comments at desertdogoutdoors at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching and good hunting and fishing.